For today's little outing, we're going to go uh, see the Busted Head Lighthouse. In its past, you know, like um, it had been vandalised by a few people, but some some private people actually took it upon themselves to to sort of fix it up, patch it up, and now they run tours there and show a little bit of history. So you know, we're going to be into that. I think uh, they charge something like ten dollars a person, and that goes to the upkeep. So we're more than happy to contribute to that. But at the moment we're just enjoying the walk up there, even though it's quite a warm day, luckily we've got a bit of breeze. It's not too bad. The Busted Head Lighthouse was first lit in 1868 and was Queensland's first coastal light. The site was chosen to warn seafarers of the dangerous rocks just off the headland which can be seen here to the left of the lighthouse. We came off the, uh, oh look at that big spider web. I'm not doing my job. My job is to run into all the spider webs and keep them out of Pascal's face. <laughs> but we uh, we came off the power line service track that uh, we were just looking at then into the trees, and as Pascal said, it, the temperature dropped like five degrees instantly. So when we come back, we've got a few a few choices. We might walk along the beach on the way back because it'll be low tide. Hot and mosquitoes. <laughs> But uh, some friends we've just met said, yep, yeah, go by the beach. So that's what we'll do. Mozzies? I think they're pretty much gone now. We're not sort of... I can see a few hovering around you. Yeah, they're not as bad. The lighthouse was demanded and converted to automatic operation in January 1986. A caretaker was instated to look after the lights but was then removed in the same year to cut back on costs. And so started the tragic decline of the site from vandalism and neglect. Thanks to the perseverance and extreme generosity of a handful of individuals, the lighthouse and its surrounds was leased to the Busted Head Lighthouse Association and this historic site was restored to its former glory. We were given a tour of the lighthouse, the museum and its surrounds by the current volunteer caretakers. The lighthouse was constructed from cast iron panels fabricated in England. This is a photograph of the lighthouse before it was dismantled and shipped to Australia. On display in the lighthouse museum are pieces of the original eight-sided lens. This telescope belonged to the first lighthouse superintendent, Thomas Rooksby, who held his post here for 35 years. The first lights were fueled by an oil lamp pictured left. This lamp was replaced with a middle kerosene lamp in 1917. The lighthouse lights became electric in 1935.
In the distance is the town of 1770, the first place in Queensland where Captain Cook landed. Several tragedies, including suicide, illness, burns and accidental drownings, led to many deaths at this remote light station. So, this is Alfred Power. <laughs> and that was original, like that, because he was, his name was Power and he was a line repairer. Alfred Power visited the Busted Head Lighthouse to repair the telegraph line in 1889. In a terrible tragedy involving a capsized vessel, he was drowned along with the acting superintendent's daughter, 20-year-old Mary Gibson and the assistant lightkeeper's wife, 39-year-old Elizabeth Wilkinson. The Busted Head Lighthouse Association has done a fantastic job restoring and looking after the graves. So there we go, that sort of wraps up our tour. It's the only lighthouse in Australia or Queensland? In Queensland that you can go up the... It's a still functioning lighthouse and it's the only one that you can still go and have a tour. Yeah. So, but um, we went and had a look at the cemetery there. To be to be totally honest, if we'd stayed there much longer, we'd be joining them. The mozzies are pretty fierce. Yep, really fierce. <laughs> I can feel <laughs> Biting my, through clothing and... I can feel my blood pressure dropping. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, we've been in Pancake Creek for a few days now and we haven't even made pancakes yet. As you probably know, we're really into buckwheat pancakes. And when our friend Annabelle came to stay with us, she told us about a variation on buckwheat pancakes, which is super simple and really healthy. Um, it's sprouted buckwheat pancakes. So what I did last night is um, grabbed a cup of buckwheat and then soaked it in two cups of water. And all we're gonna do is food process this up to get our batter. I might drain off a little bit of the water and then we can add a little bit more if it's not quite the right consistency. And that's our batter, it's as simple as that. We'll add a little pinch of salt and then you'll see how fantastic these turn out with just buckwheat. It's a really, really great um, addition to your yachty stores if you can find them. Okay, so we've got our batter here. And it's a good dripping consistency. We're gonna cook them now. I've just got a little fry pan on the go on medium heat with about a teaspoon of butter in it. Okay, so that's a pretty good yield for one cup of buckwheat, I reckon. Yeah. Do I get it all? <laughs> no, you have to share with me. So we normally, um, I don't know, we, we mix it up with what we top with sunflower seeds, coconut shavings, but today we're having honey and peanut butter with a little bit of coconut oil mixed through so you can drizzle it over the top of your pancakes. And like I said, it's just sprouted buckwheat in the food processor with water and a pinch of salt. And I've just been frying them on the fry pan for the last 40 minutes with a bit of butter. <laughs> Coconut. My mouth's watering like crazy. What do we got here? Billowheeler honey. 
-hmm. I think we opened this <laughs> this week. <laughs> Look at that. If I wanted to, I could definitely roll it like that, just like a normal pancake. Maybe slightly crumbly. Mm. It's just trying to break on the edges, but that's a pretty tight roll. Hmm. The crunch is good. Along with the stingray, we'd noticed many shovelnose rays hunting the shallows, and having never eaten shovelnose before, we were keen to try one. These holes behind the eyes are for drawing water in so the animal can breathe and that's what makes this a ray. Here you can see the gills are on the underside and I've cut through them to bleed the animal. As you can see it's got a tail and fins like a shark and some people call them shovel nosed sharks but because of that gill arrangement they're actually a ray. Nose. What do you think? It's a really subtle flavour. It's delicious and a really nice texture. The only thing that I don't like is that there's so much head. that um, We don't get a lot of meat. It's only one meal for that big ray. Right. So, not really enough recovery with filleting it. So I don't think I'll, I'll hit them again, even though they're delicious. Mm. I mean, if we're really, if we're really hard up for food, maybe I'd consider it, but I don't think we get enough meat off the actual animal to make it worthwhile for us to, to really target them. What do you think, Basky? I think so too. Stingray's better. Mm. But they're still good. It's really good meat though. It tastes a bit like shark to me, I reckon. Um, it's, it's, there's no hint of rubberiness at all. So shark, little sharks in season for sure, but there's, you wouldn't have any danger of um, heavy metals or anything in these, you know, because they're laying around on the sand. Mm. They're really good. Hi folks, I really hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Free Range Sailing and if you did, don't forget to give it a like. The information in this video was based on a book by Stuart Buchanan called The Lighthouse of Tragedy. He was actually one of the founders of the Busted Head Lighthouse Association and it's a great read with um, tales of abduction and murder and lots of shipwrecks. So if you're into that sort of thing, definitely check it out. I've seen that it's available on Amazon, but if you're in the area 1770 or if you visit the lighthouse yourselves, you can pick up a copy there. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay notified of uh, any upcoming videos. And if you're interested in supporting our productions, we've put a link to our Patreon page in the description of this video.